The New York Times finally admits that Hunter Biden's laptop is real. Chris Cuomo and CNN continue their long slide to irrelevancy. Plus, Dr. Anthony Fauci is still pushing gloom and doom. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13 minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Friday. I hope you had a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with the New York Times and some breaking news. That's right, breaking news. Double secret probation type of super important news, at least according to the New York Times. Apparently, the so-called newspaper of record is now reporting that Hunter Biden's laptop is real. It's authentic. This is the breaking news from the New York Times. Uh except it's about a year and a half late. When the New York Post was actually breaking the news leading up to the November 2020 elections, Facebook and Twitter were flat out blocking the story. Establishment news outlets were calling it Russian disinformation. Of course, the New York Post is stunned at this revelation by the New York Times. The Post put out an editorial on Thursday blasting the Times and expressing their dismay at the entire process. Here's the story. Forgive the profanity, but you've got to be blanking us. First, the New York Times decides more than a year later that Hunter Biden's business woes are worthy of a story. Then, deep in the piece, in passing, it notes that Hunter's laptop is legitimate. People familiar with the investigation said prosecutors had examined emails between Mr. Biden, Mr. Archer, and others about Burisma and other foreign business activities, the Times writes. Those emails were obtained by the New York Times from a cache of files that appears to have come from a laptop abandoned by Mr. Biden in a Delaware repair shop. The email and others in the cache were authenticated by people familiar with them and with the investigation. Authenticated? You don't say. You mean when a newspaper actually does reporting on a topic and doesn't just try to whitewash coverage for Joe Biden, it discovers it's actually true? As you can see, the Post has a major problem with the Times, and rightfully so. This was a major story that showed not only the corruption and sliminess of Hunter Biden, but the entire Biden family, including, of course, the big guy, Joe Biden. Public opinion polls have consistently shown that a full one in six Biden voters would have changed their vote had they known about the contents of Hunter Biden's laptop. That's one in six. That's enough to turn the election just that news story. And that's clear why Hunter Biden's laptop story was prevented from being a story. Blocked, banned, censored. In today's America, that is what happens to legitimate news if it doesn't meet with the radical left's approval. Here's more from the Post editorial. But wait, it doesn't end there. In October 2020, the Times cast doubt that there was a meeting between Joe Biden and an official from Burisma the Ukrainian gas company for which Hunter was a board member. A Biden campaign spokesman said Biden's official schedules did not show a meeting between the two men, the Times wrote, acting as a perfect stenographer. Yet, in the latest report, published Wednesday night, the Times said the meeting likely did happen. Biden had attended the dinner in question. Funny how this works when you don't just take someone's word for it. In the heat of the presidential race of 2020, the Times never missed a chance to cast doubt on the laptop, saying the information was purported and quoting a letter from former Democrat officials who claimed with no evidence that it was Russian disinformation. As recently as September 2021, the Times called the laptop unsubstantiated in a news story. It's unreal that the left will talk about Russia collusion or disinformation, but the ones peddling collusion and disinformation are those on the left those who control the media and big tech. Here was a tweet from Jen Psaki back in October of 2020. Hunter Biden's story is Russian disinfo, dozens of former Intel officials say. Around that same period of time, Psaki was asked about Hunter Biden's laptop, and here was her response. The president has said, and you have tweeted, that allegations of wrongdoing based on files pulled from Hunter Biden's laptop are Russian disinformation. There is a new book by a Politico reporter that finds some of the files on there are genuine. Is the White House still going with Russian disinformation? I think it's broadly known and widely known, Peter, that there was a broad range of Russian disinformation back in 2020. 
tweets, public comments, and more. Saki and the talking heads on the left continued to push the false narrative that the Hunter Biden laptop wasn't real. Now, the New York Times says it was. So what does Jen Psaki say? Not much. And, and if I may, um, you asked about Hunter Biden's laptop. You also, in October 2020, dismissed it as Russian disinformation. Do you stand by that assessment? Again, uh, I'd point you to the Department of Justice and Hunter Biden's representatives. Um, I'm a spokesperson for the United States. He doesn't work for the United States. So when those on the left, including media and big tech, were bashing the Hunter Biden laptop story, Saki was more than happy to join in. But now that the New York Times says it's real, she has no comment. It's just so typical. But I'm really glad to see the New York Post firing back at what was clearly George Orwell-style censorship. This cannot be allowed to happen in the United States of America. All right, next let's talk about CNN and Chris Cuomo. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search out my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, next we have Chris Don't Call Me Fredo Cuomo in his former network, CNN. This whole company is a dysfunctional mess and it just keeps getting worse. CNN consistently ranks well below Fox News and MSNBC. Their media watchdog, Brian Stelter, wouldn't know objectivity if it bit him in the butt. You have a host of hosts and guests doing all sorts of inappropriate things with other people and by themselves, in front of folks, on Zoom. Well, now Cuomo is actually suing CNN for wrongful termination to the tune of $125 million. It's nonsensical, but that's the world of CNN. Here's the story. But this is a guy, he got COVID, right? And then went on the air every night to talk about how sick he was and then faked his own quarantine to try to get ratings. This is a guy who literally left his home and got into a screaming match with a 60 something year old guy who was biking by who called him out for saying, hey, Chris, you you were just on the air last night talking about how you had a fever and you had chills and you were still sick. What are you doing out? And Cuomo gets into a screaming match with him. Uh, Chris Cuomo also is a guy who helped his brother not only cover up a COVID nursing home scandal, but also advised his brother on how to discredit credible accusers of sexual harassment against him, all while having allegations against himself as well. Chris Cuomo is a piece of work, but the craziness isn't just all the things that Cuomo was doing, but it's the fact that Cuomo is the one claiming that he was now somehow wrong, that despite all the things that Cuomo did, that he is somehow the victim. Here's more. On the other side of this, Chris Cuomo is accusing those currently at the network, including Jake Tapper, Don Lemon, Brian uh, Stetzler, uh, of running a smear campaign against him uh, after he was fired. So uh, there are no good guys or girls here, as I said, and this is only going to get messier for CNN as its collapse now apparently is complete. CNN is in a full meltdown, but Chris Cuomo isn't the only story. CNN's editor at large, Chris Saliza, this week, in true unbiased journalistic form, blamed Republicans for the polarization that's occurring in Washington. Well, speaking of CNN, their editor at large, Chris Saliza, has some thoughts on why this country is so polarized. And he writes, Republicans yeah. move faster and further to the ideo ideological right than Democrats have gone to the left. Uh, also, they have mm. made the entirety of the House and Senate more conservative over the past 50 years. Wow. Let's see. We have boys and girls restrooms and sports teams, critical race theory, cancel culture, defund the police, open borders, Democrats who are openly socialist. And this guy thinks the Republicans have gone further to the right than the Dems have gone to the left. It's just nonsense. Here's Joe Concha's reaction. Uh, what, what can you say about this guy? Uh, his most famous tweet is that he declared uh, definitively, without ambiguity, that uh, reporters, that journalists don't take a side, period. And then literally he takes a side uh, in every column that he writes. If you want to say that the Republican Party has gone more to the right than Democrats have gone to the left, I'm sorry. Just look at the president of the United States right now, Joe Biden, who was considered moderate back in uh, that time called the mid 90s. I believe you call that sophomore year, Carly. And, and now <laughs> you see how far left that they have gone. And CNN is supposedly a news network. It's hilarious that they will bash Fox News as right wing propaganda, but consider themselves to be mainstream. And that's one of the biggest problems of the liberal elite. 
They expect and demand that all Americans think like they do. And when most of us don't, they fight back and block and ban and censor. All right, next let's talk about Dr. Anthony Fauci after a word from our sponsor. I wanna tell you about my friends over at World Fair. If you have a photo of your childhood home, your favorite travel spot, your hometown football stadium, whatever it is, World Fair takes that photo and turns it into a hand-drawn work of art. These sketches make great gifts, moving announcement cards, invitations, and more. So many possibilities that World Fair can do for you. And all you need is a photo. Just use the link in the description and use coupon code BOBBY13 for 10% off your next purchase. All right, next let's talk about Dr. Anthony Fauci, who is trying so hard to stay relevant as the rest of America moves on from COVID and gets back to their normal, everyday lives. Fauci was a fixture on CNN, MSNBC, and the establishment media, mostly warning that we can never return to normal, that we have to wear masks that science doesn't support, that we have to vaccinate children, which science doesn't support either. Well, remember, when Fauci was issuing dire warnings about the so-called Omicron variant, data from the very beginning coming out of Africa showed that it wasn't powerful, that most people were just getting a cold. But there was Fauci hitting the left-wing media. Joe Biden in the White House joined in as well. Remember this tweet? We are intent on not letting Omicron disrupt work and school for the vaccinated. You've done the right thing and we will get through this. For the unvaccinated, you're looking at a winter of severe illness and death for yourselves, your families, and the hospitals you may soon overwhelm. As you know, none of that came to pass, not even close. But now, Fauci in a local interview on the ABC affiliate in San Diego is warning of a possible return to mandates. Here's Fauci. A longtime director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases told me numbers for cases, hospitalizations, and deaths are dropping. That gives him hope. But his optimism is tempered by the new, more contagious Omicron subvariant called BA2. It's caused numbers in Europe to rise, and wastewater surveillance on our East Coast and Midwest show a surge is imminent. Dr. Fauci told me he expects it will become the dominant strain in the U.S. over the next few weeks and erase many of the gains we've fought for. We have to be careful that if we do see a surge as a result of that, that we're flexible enough to reinstitute the kinds of interventions that could be necessary to stop an additional surge. The kinds of interventions necessary to stop the surge. First of all, Nothing needed to be done to stop Omicron at all. Second, none of the interventions did anything to stop any surge. COVID did what it was going to do. And two years of masking young children, for example, did nothing but hurt young children and their development. Here's more from Fauci. Dr. Fauci stressed the need for vaccines and boosters. He even told me it's likely older and immunocompromised Americans will need another shot. I don't think there's any doubt that sooner or later, particularly among the elderly who have less of a robust immune response than a normal younger population, that sooner or later they will need a boost of a fourth shot. Well, that's just music to Pfizer's ears, isn't it? So protect yourself to the level that you feel comfortable with and get on with your life. That's what people are ready to do. And that's what the freedoms enumerated in the Constitution demand us to do. Okay, so we've had the New York Times and Hunter Biden, CNN and Chris Cuomo, and Dr. Anthony Fauci. We need to ask them, do you have a relaxed brain? I got what you call like, I don't know, a relaxed brain. Okay, for Relaxed Brain Friday, let's start with Kamala Harris, who was sent overseas to talk with foreign leaders on the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Following the trip, Harris tweeted that the United States stands firmly with the Ukrainian people in defense of the NATO alliance. Just one problem, Ukraine isn't a part of NATO. The Harris team deleted that tweet and put a new one up with altered wording, but this is just an ongoing pattern of ineptness on the part of Harris. And then we have the University of Florida, which is renaming a study room following a report by the conservative group Campus Reform. What was the name? Here's the story. The University of Florida changed the name of its Karl Marx study room to Group Study Room 229, after campus reform's March 7th report. 
As campus reform previously reported, the Karl Marx study room located in Library West included a plaque describing Marx, the author of the Communist Manifesto, as a philosopher, radical economist, and revolutionary critic. According to campus reform, other study rooms carried names of historical figures such as Benjamin Franklin, William Shakespeare, and Mahatma Gandhi. Now, all the rooms have had their historical figure names removed and just go by the room number. And then we have some breaking headlines from the Babylon Bee. First, in an effort to cover for Joe Biden's failures, we have the new messaging coming from the media. Media. Gas prices have always been above $7, and we've always been at war with Russia. And then we have the American people's reaction to the stunning news on Hunter Biden. Nation wishes there were some way they could have known about the Hunter Biden laptop story before the election. Yes, it would have been nice if we would have had some actual news story before the election. Oh, wait. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search out my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Thank you so much for tuning in. Our next show is going to be Monday evening at the usual time, 6.30 p.m. Central. Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13-minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, Check out these videos right here, and I'll see you next time.